What is your name, please? My name is Hugh E. Ballman. What is your name, please? My name is Hugh E. Ballman. What is your name, please? My name is Hugh E. Ballman. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Hugh E. Ballman and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. We're here again with our game of deliberate misrepresentation in which four presumably smart people try to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. Tell the Truth is brought to you, as you know, by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> Now, these three people all claim to be U.E. Borman. Of course, only one is the real U.E. Borman. The other two have simply assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, in front of you, there is a copy of an affidavit. Will you please listen and follow along as I read it to you? I, U.E. Borman, live in Arlington, Virginia. I have spent 30 years of my life in the employ of the federal government. I started in December of 1927 as a clerk stenographer. I am now chief of the United States Secret Service. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, U.E. Borman. Now on with our game. Three people, as you know, all claim to be U.E. Borman, chief of the United States Secret Service. Now, remember, only the real U.E. Borman is required to answer your questions truthfully. You will each question until you hear this signal. And at the end of the questioning period, you'll be asked to register your vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real U.E. Borman. And we will begin this first round tonight with um, Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Well, since the real Mr. Borman has to tell the truth, let's start with an embarrassing one. Number one, how old are you? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Number two, how old are you? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Number three, how old are you? Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Uh, number one, at what age did you start to work for the government? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Number two, how old? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Number three, how old? Twenty. Twenty. I have to figure this out now. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-seven, twenty-one. While you're figuring, Ralph, I'll have to move along. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle, Kitty. You lost me in the mathematics, but <laughs> I'd like to know from number two, what are the difference in the duties between the FBI and the Secret Service? The Secret Service protects the President of the United States and also investigates counterfeiting violations. The FBI has a number of duties, interstate violations, kidnapping laws, and so forth. Number three. Uh, you deal in smuggling and that sort of thing, don't you? No, ma'am. Oh, you don't? I mean, the Secret Service sort of protects people from being smuggled. No, ma'am. No. Well, uh, don't they even care? I said it all. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, as a member of the Secret Service, can you tell me who is Frank M. Barry? He's one of our agents who is on leave now in another country establishing a Secret Service. Uh -huh. Uh, number two, is the U.S. Secret Service permitted to tap wires? No, sir. Uh, number three, uh, I'd like to ask this question. Could I be a Secret Service agent? Mr. Gardner, I don't think any columnist would make a good Secret Service agent. <laughs> I didn't mean what I wrote. I meant my height. <laughs> I'm afraid you're a little too short. A little too short. Polly Bergen. Uh, number two, if, if uh, I made a counterfeit bill and I had it on me, uh, could you arrest me right now? Well, if you made it, I wouldn't arrest you right now, but I would right after the show. <laughs> he's, a, he's a right guy. Yeah, he sure is. Uh, number three, is there... Um, 
is there anything uh, as far as counterfeit bills that makes it more difficult to make them than anything else? The one thing that, that's difficult to, to copy in a counterfeit bill. Why, yes. What? Well, you want to know what it is? Yes, sir, please. <laughs> well, generally, it's the engraving, the picture, the toning, shading. I see. Is, uh, number three, is there anything difficult about the paper? Is the paper changed from time to time? No, it's been constant for years. The same paper. Ralph? Uh, number two, when was the Secret Service instituted and by whom? In um, 1865. And that's about it, I'm afraid, panel. It's time already to vote. So without consultation, will you mark your ballot and vote for number one, number two, or number three. May I remind you that the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote, which means, of course, with a little mathematics, that if they fool the entire panel, they may divide as much as $1,000. All right, panel, have you marked your ballots? Yep. No answers I'm getting. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> Polly, for whom did you vote? And don't glare at me like that. I voted for number two. Do you have a reason? No. Good. <laughs> Ralph, your vote was for? Number one. He's the only one who answered my mathematical question correctly, which I finally figured out. He's oh, you're 27, and he worked for 30 years. This is 1957. You finally caught up with it, huh? Uh, Kitty, your vote was for? Number one. And uh, why, Kitty? He just looked like the most secret of all three secret <laughs> service men. Hi. I voted for number one, too, for this reason, two reasons. First of all, I noticed he was wearing a double-breasted suit, which means it's easy to conceal a Colt 38. <laughs> and secondly, uh, he knew that Frank, uh, who Frank Barry was. Frank Barry used to be the chief uh, secret service guard for the Truman and Roosevelt administration. All right, sir. There we have now our votes and our reasons showing that our minds are made up. Let's see whether yours have been made up successfully and whether you beat, match, or go beyond the panel. Let's see what happens now because we're going to find out which one of these gentlemen uh, is the real U.E. Bauman. Will the real U.E. Bauman please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. Now let's find out about the other two gentlemen. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and uh, what you do? I am George D. Johnson, general manager of the Sheraton McAlpin Hotel here in New York City. <laughs> and number three, how about you, sir? I am W.F. McLaughlin, manager for Beneficial Finance Company. Come on down and see me. <laughs> You didn't hear the end of that when he said he was manager of a finance company. He says, come on down and see me. <laughs> yes, hi. I'd like to know how Mr. Johnson knew uh, Mr. Uh, Barry. I was in Washington in the hotel business at the Sheraton Park in Carlton for the last 25 years. Uh -huh. See there? This is the only columnist that can find me. <laughs> I'd like to check that mathematical thing again. Didn't you say you were 22 when you started? Mm -hmm. Well, you worry with him after the show, Ralph. We haven't got too much time now. So I have to tell everyone there were exactly three incorrect votes for a total of $750 from Geritol. Congratulations, gentlemen. I hope you had fun. We did. Good night and good luck to you. And now let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Joey Adams. What is your name, please? My name is Henny Youngman. What is your name, please? My name is Phil Foster. <laughs> now, panel and audience, what you have just heard is quite correct. You all know these three famous comedians under the names that they have just given you. But before entering show business, one of these gentlemen was known as Michael Feldman. Will you please listen while I read this affidavit? I, Michael Feldman, have spent many years in show business as a humorist and comic. Previously, however, I have worked as a carnival pitchman 
and I still hold a paid-up union card as a reminder of the days when I was a house painter. During the war, I was aboard a ship which was sunk in the English Channel. As you may have noticed, I survived and am now part owner of a golf course. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Michael Feldman. Now, in just about 60 seconds, our panel will start asking... On with our show. And uh, these three people, as you know now, all claim to have been originally the former Michael Feldman. Remember, only the real former Michael Feldman is required to answer your questions truthfully. And I think since you all and we all know these gentlemen well here, let's dispense with the numbers this time, panel, and call them all by the names by which we all know them so well. And we start with uh, Polly Burke. Polly? Uh, Phil, why did you pick the name Foster? I lived on Foster Avenue in Brooklyn. <laughs> Kenny, why did you pick the name Youngman? I saw a sign once with Mae West, Go West, uh, Go West Young Man. I figured it would last a... You know, the game to feel like a straight man. And number three, uh, Jerry, why did you pick the name Adam? Oh, I couldn't pick Eve. <laughs> you know, I have a feeling I should just quit now while I'm ahead from the first game. While you're ahead. Uh, uh, Henny, uh, you say your name was Feldman before? I didn't say that. You didn't say that. <laughs> Ralph Bellamy. Uh, Joey, um... <laughs> Ralph, what? give up. Don't go on. It's all over. What's the uh, distinguishing characteristic of outside paint? Well, I don't know. I, I was a kid in Pittsburgh. I don't know. That's enough. <laughs> all right. what is it? Well, I did quite a bit of painting. I painted a whole ceiling once. I painted a whole painting once in a study in calcimine. <laughs> Just white. That's as direct an answer as I ever got to anything. Uh, Phil, what's the distinguishing feature of outside paint? Well, I don't know, as a uh, member of the... I don't start the... with I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, while they're out of knowing, I knew the answer to that. Paint you use outside. Kitty? Henny, yes. under what circumstances was your ship sunk in the English Channel? Well, I told some jokes one show, and the captain let me... <laughs> we haven't got a chance here. <laughs> Phil... <laughs> Have you any recollection of your seal as a carnival pitchman? Could you do any of it now? Uh, oh, yeah. don't get him started. Come don't on. get him started. <laughs> I, uh, some of it I can remember. Well, let's hear it. Well, I'm afraid we haven't got time for a long spiel, Kitty. Let's, uh... I'd like just to hear a first sentence. All right, first sentence. All right, well, step up, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. You'll never go find out about a spiel. Yeah, yes, it's all right. You're absolutely Sounds right. very professional. <laughs> um, Joey... How did you get to be from a pitchman to a house painter? Well, I laid an egg in a couple of towns and I took everything that was available. <laughs> Hi, Gardner. Well, first, I'd like to say I'm awfully happy to be here at Grossinger's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look now, your bill just came. You're not so happy. Uh, what I'd like to ask, uh, Henny, uh, who are your partners in this golf course you're supposed to own? Well, uh, I have so many comedians. We're all wealthy, you know. I think, Joey, uh, how come, since you decided you were going to write books, you didn't change your name from Feldman to Hemingway instead of Adams? Well, I changed it to Adams, and one fellow met me. His name was Adams, too. After I changed it from Feldman, he said, uh, are we related in any way? I said, I don't know. What was your name before? <laughs> I would like to ask I Phil Wright. That's about it. <laughs> With all the straight men we have on the panel tonight, not by choice, but by circumstance, it's time to vote. No consultation again. Would you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Did you want? Okay, panel, have you marked your ballots? Yeah. All right. Polly, for whom did you vote? <laughs> <laughs> number one. All right. Ralph, how about you? Number two. Kitty, your vote? Number three. No, number two. <laughs> oh, I meant number three. Oh, I put the wrong You meant to vote I for number three? Number three. I'm number sorry, three. Number three. Number All three. right, number three. Uh, <coughs> All right, and uh, hi? Number three. Number three. He's the only one with a tan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, we'll have to get a recap on that because I don't know whether the, uh, the lights have gone up in the right places. But there you are now. The die is cast. <laughs> and our minds are made up, and let's see whether yours are too. We're going to see now which one of these three eminent comedians is the real former Michael Feldman. 
Will the real former Michael Feldman please stand up? No, he's ah. always been that dark. Oh. <laughs> now we have a peculiar way of going about this since we didn't use numbers in this quiz tonight. Joey Adams, will you tell us who you really are? <laughs> well, my name is Joey Adams, but my real name is Perry Como. <laughs> I just wrote a new book called Cindy and I, written by uh, Joey Adams about, of course, uh, Zelda and Sam. So it's on your newsstand or in your bookstores starting April 17th. Get a copy of Cindy and I. I think you have a lot of fun with it. Penny <laughs> Youngman, uh, who are you? My real name is Perry Como, and I've just written a book called Silly and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's available at your bookstores, uh, wherever he said. And, uh, <laughs> incidentally, I've been asked to uh, mention that I'm appearing in Kansas City at the Hotel Muleback starting Friday. Please be there. We need the money. <laughs> Let's see now, there were two incorrect votes worth $250 each, which means a total of $500 from Geritol. I'll take it, I'll take it. You take it? In cash or in Geritol? In any event, thank you very much for being with us tonight. It's been a lot of fun for us. Hope you enjoyed it just half as much. Thank you. Good night, good night. <laughs> now let's have our third team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Luina Zecchini. What is your name, please? My name is Luina Zecchini. What is your name, please? My name is Luina Zecchini. Now, panel, will you listen while I read this affidavit? I, Duina Zacchini, am a human cannonball. When not being shot from a cannon, I spend my time at home with my husband and three children. I was born in Alexandria, Egypt, to a circus family, and started my show business career as a trapeze artist. My sister and I are the only two people in the world to be shot out of one cannon simultaneously. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Dwina Zacchini. And we'll start our cross-examination in just... All right, now, panel, these three people all claim to be Dwina Zacchini, the human cannonball. Again, question until you hear the signal. We'll start this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Um, number two, you uh, say that you're shot out of the cannon with your sister simultaneously. Do you, how do you, how do you stack yourself in the cannon? Do you come out one on top of the other or back this way, back to back or sideways? How do you, how do, you do that? We get in by the feet. You get in by, by the, the top of the barrel. And then we lie one on top of the other, and we uh -huh. are shot simultaneously. I see. Now, number one, can you tell me what kind of power is used to shoot a human being out of a cannon? Really is a cannon to compress the hair, but uh, there's a very little powder, only for the effect. Ah, but it's... Sorry, Kitty. Hi, Gardner. Number three, what was the name of the first man ever to be shot out of a cannon in the circus? Do you remember? I sincerely don't remember. Uh, what is the name of the Ringling Barnum clown who makes props that probably made the cannon that you're shot out of? Do you know? Uh, <clears throat> I don't remember the name of the clown, but my father is the originator of the act, and he built the cannon. I see. Number two, is it true or false that all the elephants in the circus are female? What did you say? Is it true that all the elephants in the circus are female? All the elephants. In our circus? All the elephants yeah. in the circus are female. Is that I true? don't know. Can you answer that question, number one? Really, I don't know. How about you, number three? <laughs> Bolly Bergen. Um, number one, uh, how long have you been in this country? Two years. Two years? Uh, how did you learn how to speak English? Uh, really, no well. <laughs> Why? Really, no well. Really, not well. Oh, not well. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, did you ever suffer from headaches? Oh, yes, I did. I just wondered, it, it seems like it might be sort of a hard way to make a living. 
uh, almost as hard as trying to figure out which one of these three is the one. Uh, number three, uh, uh, was your family Egyptian or were they just traveling in Egypt at the time when you were born? They just had a circus at the time. They I see. Ralph? Uh, number one, you say, uh, when you're not being shot out of a can and you spend a lot of time with your husband, I hope you do spend a lot of time with him. Um, are you with Ringling Brothers Circus, I imagine? Pardon me? Are, are you, you with Ringling Brothers Circus? No. No. Are you with a circus now? Uh, right now, no, but no. I would be after two, two weeks. Number two, are you with Ringling Brothers? No. Number no, no, three, no. are you with Ringling Brothers? No. Oh. You have... Kitty? Number one, how young were you when you started working in the circus? In the circus? <laughs> oh, really, I was a child because it's a tradition. You know, my parents were in the cir circus, so I was in the circus since I was a little child. Oh, you mean, pardon me, uh, when I start to work, I was around 17. Number two, if you had your choice, would you prefer another means of livelihood? Would I prefer one? Would you prefer to make a living some other way? Oh, than no. Being shot out of a cannon. No. You love it. I love the cannon and the trapeze, because I'm a trapeze artist. That's it. Time again to vote, panel. So will you please get pencil ready and mark your ballots. Marking for number one, number two, or number three. Ballots all marked, panel. Holly. For whom did you mark your ballot, Holly? I voted for number three. <laughs> Just under the wire. Why? Well, because I think it's number two. But number three... <laughs> no, really, this makes a lot of sense, honestly. Number three looks least likely. So I voted for her. Yeah, sure. Sure, Polly. Uh, Ralph? <laughs> I voted for number three. Oh. I, I thought number three had uh, more information, was a little more glib with it. Kitty? I voted for number one. And what was your reason for I that? I had a feeling of the compressed air sounded terribly legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> it usually does. <laughs> Hi, Gardner. Well, I voted for number three. I mean, she looked like one of the few blondes that showed uh, she could be shot out of the cannon without showing powder marks. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have it. Now, don't forget there are some members of our studio audience here voting along and vying with the panel. Hope you are at home, too. So don't change your opinion now as we find out which one of these ladies is the real human cannonball. So will the real Duina Zacchini please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, you did well on that one, panel. Extremely well. Let's find out about the other two now. Number one, would you tell us who you really are? My name, uh, my name is Rita Anavita. I'm a sculptress, and right now I am working for a page person advertising. Our page person. <laughs> Number two, how about you? My name is Bianca De Paoli. And I work for a new Italian house of fashion, Ines da Roma, here in New York City. Well, there you have it. And as you can see, there were three right and only one wrong this time. So that means $250 in Geritol to be divided. Thank you very much, ladies, for being with us. You've given us a good time. Good night and good luck. I guess that's all we have time for tonight, so all I can say now is good night, panel. Good night, bud. <laughs> Remember what I told you about Geritol, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Right now, this is Bud Collier saying good night and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Travel arrangements for To Tell the Truth are made through American Airlines. American Airlines, 5,000 customers, and luxurious comfort of DC-7 flagship. To Tell the Truth is the Mark Hudson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. <laughs>